Hey guys, Ryan King here, and I'm the keyboard instructor for WorshipArtistry.com. In today's video, we're going to talk about how to become a better auxiliary keyboard player. And many of you have emailed me and asked, how do you become a better aux keyboard player? What are you supposed to play? How are you supposed to, uh, you know, support the, the main keyboard player? Um, what are you supposed to do as far as the rest of the band is concerned? And so we're going to talk a little bit about that today. Now, for those of you who don't really know what an aux keyboard player is, anytime you have two or more keyboard players, whether that's an acoustic piano with another keyboard or two keyboards or three keyboards, anytime you have two or more, that second keyboard and beyond, if you have three keyboard players, the second and third, those guys are going to be what you would call auxiliary keyboard players. You're going to have one keyboard player that's going to be the primary um, keyboard. They're going to play that main piano line. A lot of times, that's probably what they're spending their time doing is playing the piano parts which means that they're going to uh, be using both hands probably, they're going to be arpeggiating their left hand a lot, they're going to be pulsing their chords in their right hand a lot, they're just going to be playing a lot of notes. And so as an aux keyboard player, that means that we need to play less. That aux keyboard player is probably going to be playing um, pads, some synth parts, maybe some strings, or Hammond B3 organ. And so you're there to really support what's happening on the, the main keyboard part, and really support what's happening musically all the way around. Uh, I've seen some churches that happen to have uh, three different keyboards. Um, the main one's going to be playing piano. That second guy is probably going to be playing pads, maybe some Hammond B3 organ. That third player is probably going to be playing uh, maybe some strings, some bell patches, and that sort of thing. So depending on what kind of church you're in and your situation, you might be playing a variety of different things. But again, the whole point of an aux keyboard player is a supportive role. You're not there to be the lead instrument. You're there to really be support behind what's going on musically. And in order to do that, it all starts with one thing, and that's simplifying. Uh, I guess the biggest thing that I see with many keyboard players is that they approach the um, aux keys area the same way that they would approach playing kind of the main piano part, which means they're going to play a lot of notes. For instance, if you were the main keyboard player and you were playing the song This I Believe by Hillsong, you might play it like this. So that was the chorus to this, I believe, and as you could see, I played kind of down here in the middle to the lower end of the keyboard. I was doing big chords, doing full octaves in my left hand. Uh, I was arpeggiating my chords, adding little passing tones, and so um, there was kind of a lot going on there. And so again, that is if you were the main keyboard player. You might even shift it up an octave, especially as uh, those other choruses really start to build. You can start uh, and move up an octave to give it some energy. But the point of that is that you're probably playing a lot of notes, um, you're arpeggiating your chords, you're adding some passing tones and that sort of thing. Well as an aux keyboard player you don't want to do that because if you did you'd start really playing on top of uh, what that other piano player is doing. If you were using like an EP or something like that it really could clash with what they're playing especially if you're not playing the exact same notes and landing right when they are landing. Uh, and so that's kind of a main thing that I see with a lot of keyboard players is they approach it the same way that they would play it um, if they were the main keyboard player. So the best advice that I can give you, simplify. That's the main thing that you can do. And so kind of a, a good approach to that is number one, as an aux keyboard player, just take your left hand and drop it off. Don't even worry about playing your left hand. Now there are times where it's okay to use your left hand depending on what kind of sounds you're playing. Maybe whenever you get to a section of a song where it's just going to be pad and nothing else, then it's okay to bring in your left hand to fill in that low end of things. But uh, by and large, you just want to drop off your left hand and only use your right hand. The next thing that you want to do is you don't want to arpeggiate your chords unless you're having to play like a big synth part. The main thing you want to do is just diamond your chords or hold your chords. So for instance, as I mentioned, an aux keyboard player is probably going to be playing uh, a lot of pads, um, maybe some strings, uh, or even some B3 organ. And so if you were to play uh, that chorus of this I believe and just use a pad, like a warm pad, it couldn't sound like this. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. 
one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and one. So there you can see that I was really simple. I only used my right hand and really, I, I didn't really play any more than three notes at a time. Sometimes it was only two notes. So that's a real good um, kind of practice to do as an aux keyboard player. Only use your right hand, don't worry about your left hand, and really simplify. Only do about two or three notes max, uh, really filling out the chords. You don't need to worry about that because uh, of all the other instruments. It really takes listening to the other instruments. If um, it comes down to just being pad, then it's okay to add in your left hand. You could do something like this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, Four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and one. There you can see by adding in my left hand, I added in that low end uh, of things. And if it's just going to be pad, it's okay to do that. Now, if you're playing with the rest of the band, and especially if your bass player is playing, you probably don't want to do your left hand because that could really muddy things up and it could make things difficult for your sound en engineer. It's a whole lot easier just to drop off your left hand and only do your right hand. Now, as I mentioned, as an aux keyboard player, you're going to be playing some pads. You might even add in some strings or some B3. And if you were playing that same chorus, it could look like this. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, and one. There you can see I added in some acoustic strings there. And if you're looking at what I'm doing right here on my iPad, I'm just triggering some of these different sounds. I've got them layered in. And then I'm using my faders here to just kind of gradually fade in those sounds. And so I've got my nice JX Warm Pad going on. And then I added in some Espressivo strings. And it's just a nice acoustic string sound using my fader just to kind of fade them in. And that way, once we get to an end of a section, if I need to, I can fade them out. Now, as things really start to build uh, and the energy really starts to kind of go up to the next level in a song, you could add some B3 into the mix just to give it some extra bite. So if we went into another chorus, it could sound like this. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And one, two, three, four. And one, two, three, four. And one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And one, two, three, four. And one. So there you can see I kind of shifted up an inversion here. Um, I kept in my strings and I slowly added in that B3 just to add in just another texture of sound. Then as we really started getting into the chorus, I started engaging the Leslie cabinet of a B3. Uh, with a Hammond B3 organ, it's got a rotary cabinet is what we call it, or a Leslie, and it's got speakers that spin. And so just using another fader, I allowed that um, those speakers to spin a little faster. That's uh, a unique characteristic of the Hammond B3 organ. And so that gives it a lot of energy. And then as we started to kind of pull things back, I slowed that down, started pulling out the Hammond B3 organ, and then started pulling back the string. So it came back just to that warm pad. And as you can see, I'm only using my right hand, which frees up my left hand to do some control things, to add in some extra sounds, to engage a Leslie cabinet, and that sort of thing. So it's kind of a trade-off. If you're using both hands, it's kind of difficult to change sounds. But if you're only using one hand, then you can start to add in in, um, some extra sounds. Sometimes you might use both hands um, in order to do a supportive role, especially in a lot of these newer songs where maybe you're playing a pad in one hand and maybe doing a bell patch in another. And so if I were to add in, say, um, a, a nice Fender Rhodes, for instance, uh, and just my, uh, my warm pad, I could just play a chord in my left hand and then just do some kind of little single notes here.
So there I'm still, you know, kind of keeping it relatively simple, only doing two notes in my left hand and doing those single notes in my right hand just to add some color, but I'm not getting too busy with it. And so again, just as an auxiliary keyboard player, you just really want to simplify things. You want to take your left hand, just drop it completely off, and in your right hand, uh, just really simplify it and really don't do any more than um, two or three note chords. That way it just keeps it nice and simple. Now, if that's challenging for you, a little trick that you can do is you can take a pencil. I've actually got one right here. You can take a pencil uh, and put it between your fingers. There's three ways to do this, and um, each way kind of gets easier and easier. The most difficult way, if you want to make it to where um, you're only playing three notes, you can take a pencil and take it and put it between your index finger, your middle finger, and your ring finger. Have your middle finger be on bottom, and your index finger and your middle finger be on top. You can kind of see that right there. So your middle finger is on bottom, index ring finger on top. This way you can only play with three fingers, your thumb, your middle finger, and your pinky. That way you can only do three note chords, something like this. You move up to a D if you wanted to. Move up to an actual D chord here. back down to an A. Or you just drop it off all together and do two note chords. Now that's probably um, the most hindering of all as far as that's concerned. It's really only going to allow you to do two or three note chords. And because of this, and you're really concentrating on keeping that pencil in there, you're only really going to be able to do triads and maybe two note um, chords as far as uh, you know a first inversion or a second inversion is concerned. If you want to make it a little easier, all you have to do is reverse your fingers. Take the pencil out and put your index or your middle finger on top and put your index and your ring finger on bottom. What this is going to allow you to do is to use four fingers, thumb, index, uh, your ring finger, and your pinky. This way you can start to do um, some a little bit easier three note chords. You could do um, a little bit of a, you could do an A here, move up to a D, an E, you also move up to an F sharp minor, E, and A. So there you can see that uh, you can do three note chords, you can do a little bit of, um, it makes it a little easier to do some different inversions. And then if you want to make it the easiest of all, just take the pencil out and this time um, put it between your thumb and uh, your middle finger and have your index finger on top like this. So your thumb and middle finger on bottom and your index finger is on top. This way you can play some nice triads, you can do three note uh, chords in especially second inversions and even first inversions as well. You do A, D, E, F sharp minor, come down and do a B minor 7, E, even back to an A2 chord. Now the key to that is really focusing in on making sure you hold the pencil um, in your hand. Uh, don't concentrate too much on, on the notes that you're playing because if you do you'll see it start to slip out and then it could just ultimately come out. The point of this exercise really is to simplify. Uh, as I mentioned, as an auxiliary keyboard player, you want to simplify uh, doing two note, three note chords at most. And so, uh, again, as an auxiliary keyboard player, you're probably going to be playing some pads, uh, strings, maybe some B3. You might add in uh, an electric piano here and there. If, you're, um, if you've got somebody playing the acoustic piano or the main piano part and you want to add in an EP, again, just diamond your chords. Don't worry about playing a lot of rhythm or a lot of notes. Um, the, the biggest thing that you want to do is just diamond your chords. That's the best thing you can do. That way your pad will continue to sound out. A lot of players, what they'll do is they'll bring in a pad and they'll start arpeggiating their chords. And if you'll notice here, if I take my chord, you don't really hear a whole lot of variation when I am arpeggiating my chords here. Even when I do that, you don't hear anything. It's just the entire pad sounding out. And so that's the reason I tell a lot of keyboard players, don't worry about arpeggiating your chords. Just diamond your chords. Again, diamond means to just 
play the chord and hold it until you need to change to the next chord. Um, depending on what kind of sound that you're using, if you start arpeggiating your chord, it may start building on top of each other and the sound can get louder and louder and you don't want that. You just want to diamond your chords and you'll be good to go. So again, you've got this little pencil trick. You can put it between your middle finger and your index and your ring finger. You can reverse that or you can bring it and put it underneath your index finger and it allows you a little bit more flexibility. But the whole point of it is just to simplify. So if you want to become uh, a better auxiliary keyboard player just really focus in on being supportive only use your right hand take your left hand drop it off tie it behind your back if you need to um, only do two or three note chords and really focus in on using um, those pads maybe some strings some Hammond B3 organ um, but the main thing really focus in on, on that pad that can definitely be supportive and the nice thing about a pad is that when things are big and loud you're not really going to hear it that much but when things really pull back you'll start to hear, hear it and especially feel it if you drop off um, it's definitely going to be noticeable when you don't have a pad in there, especially from transitions uh, from song to song. So again, in order to become a better auxiliary keyboard player, you want to simplify, focus in on the pads, and you'll be good to go. Good luck and have fun.